Here let's discuss ontologies for metadata curation and how to use ontologies in Omero. We have introduced the concept of key value pairs for metadata annotation, where a key denotes a real world object or an abstract concept that is assigned a specific value. The value then is the number or text string that specifies this key. Examples were the cell type, which could be CD4 positive T cell, or a disease model, which could be experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. Now there remains one problem. If we look at the individual keys or the values, there could be different ways of spelling or different wordings that we could use for annotation. For example, instead of cell type, we could write type of cell, cell type with a hyphen, cellular entity, cellular identity, or else. For the CD4 positive T cell, we could write it in various different ways, either as CD4 plus T cell or CD4 dash positive T lymphocyte, or else. The same is true for experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, which is abbreviated EAE or sometimes called allergic encephalomyelitis. So, how do we avoid ambiguity in terms? How can we describe the data as objectively as possible? And how can we make that metadata machine interpretable? One possible solution is offered by controlled vocabularies. A controlled vocabulary is simply a list of terms. Typically, each term has a concrete definition. It has a unique identifier, and then different types of these lists exist. The simplest one would be an alphabetical list, but there could be also a thesaurus, collecting different synonyms, or a taxonomy, which has a hierarchical or network-like form. Sometimes controlled vocabularies are even termed ontologies, but there is a difference. Controlled vocabularies can be used to standardize terms. Here's an example. The medical subject headings controlled vocabulary is in the form of a thesaurus and it is curated by the National Library of Medicine. We see a definition of CD4 positive T lymphocytes, a way how to spell it, and some synonyms. So if we use the MASH controlled vocabulary in our list, we would go for CD4 dash positive T dash lymphocyte as the way to write our value. To cover that this term was derived from the controlled vocabulary, we use the term as a value under our desired key and then we add as a second key the URL that links to the ID of that term in the MASH. Now the term is clearly defined and there is some hierarchical information contained in MASH. However, more attributes and properties or relationships among all of these terms are not given. This is provided in ontologies. An ontology is a conceptual framework of how specific terms are used to represent the domain knowledge that is given in a specific research domain. So, on top of definitions and IDs, terms have different attributes and properties, and there are relationships defined between terms and their classes. Terms that have shared attributes are grouped into such classes. Terms in different ontologies are mapped to each other or are adopted from one another. An ontology is not static. It can be extended over time because the domain knowledge is evolving too, so ontologies are typically versioned. Importantly, an ontology is a formalized knowledge representation. It is expressed in a specific ontology format and thus becomes machine interpretable. Some examples of ontologies. There is the experimental factor ontology, short EFO, curated by the EMBL European Bioinformatics Institute. For bioimaging, there is the Bioimaging Methods Ontology, FBBI, curated by the Cell Image Library, or the Cell Line Ontology, curated by the University of Michigan, and many more. What are ontology classes? A class represents a real-world object, for example, microscope objective lens, or an abstract concept, for example, a disease model. Classes have different subclasses or the individual terms, also called instances, that share those attributes. Classes then have also specific relationships with each other that could be partial overlap or even mutual exclusive. An attribute is then a specific property of a class that is shared by the instances or the subclasses of this class. For example, the definition is an attribute. As said, relationships are defining how classes are related to each other. Please note that this key value pair notation is just the same concept as key value pairs in Omero, but this is not the keys and values that we will use for metadata annotation to our data. So if you use an ontology for key value pair annotation, we could again look for the specific value offered by an ontology. In this case, let's choose CD4-positive alpha-beta T-cell. Again, as a second key value pair, 
we add the URL that resolves to the ID of the specific term we have chosen. As mentioned, several ontologies can share terms. In this example, the term is found in the EFA ontology, in the cell ontology, in the Uber Anatomy ontology, and others. So, why are there so many different ontologies in the first place? Well, ontologies are designed to optimally represent a specific domain knowledge. So, in different domains, different representations might be optimal. Such knowledge can be represented as a tree structure or a knowledge graph. Here also the relationships between the classes are clear. In this case, subclasses, so these are shared attributes, shown as a dependency where a T cell is a lymphocyte or a B cell is a lymphocyte, whereas any lymphocyte is also a leukocyte, and so on. Notably, this is a graphical representation of a formalized and machine-interpretable knowledge representation. If we look at graph visualizations from different ontologies, we would find the very same term here represented in both ontologies. You can see similarities but also differences between the ontology graphs. In this case, the term originates from the cell ontology and is adopted in the EFO ontology. As terms can be adopted from other ontologies or synonyms are mapped to each other, this allows a semantic knowledge representation across domains. What does it mean in practice? If we use a single key value pair for metadata annotation based on ontology terms and ontology IDs, we get access to extended domain knowledge. In our case, we know the CD4 positive alpha beta T cell, coming from the EFO ontology but originating from the cell ontology, includes more information on the domain. For example, it is carrying a T cell with alpha and beta chains, as it is a subclass of alpha beta T cells. We also know that it is a subclass of the mature alpha beta T cells, so it has completed thymic selection, i.e. is not an immature thymocyte. We also know that this cell type belongs to the hematopoietic system. All of this knowledge is knowledge that is clear for an expert in the field. However, a computer could not know. So notably, due to the formalized ontology format, a computer has access to this knowledge. How do we use ontologies in Omero? So far, there is no standardized way of how ontologies should be used in Omero, but we can start with some recommendations here. Based on the recommended metadata for biological images list and the ISA tab format, which is a metadata standard, we suggest that in order to create machine interpretable metadata, you should make use of ontology terms and ontology term source references. So first, choose an ontology derived term that describes the value for your key and then add another key value pair with the URL that resolves to the ID of that value. Do this by using the same key, adding the words term accession number. As an example, if we took biological entity as a metadata item from the Rambi list and used the value CD4 positive alpha beta T cell as an ontology derived term, we should also add biological entity term accession number with the URL resolving to that term. Sometimes it is recommended to not only include the link to the term, but also to the ontology source reference. Why is that? Ontologies are designed to allow for cross-domain referencing, so a specific term in one ontology is adopted by another ontology, as we have seen. However, if you choose a specific value from the EFA ontology that originates from the CL ontology, you would not know just from the term ID that you have chosen it from the EFO ontology. If you want to indicate the ontologies as being EFO instead of CL, you can use a third key value pair, specifying biological entity term source ref as the URL resolving to the EFO ontology format. In the beginning, using ontologies seems to add some extra work. So what are the benefits? Before publication already, if you stick to ontology control terms, you can avoid ambiguity in collaborative research settings. You can also use the identifiers for automated image analysis workflows instead of natural language terms. Moreover, over time you will be able to do semantic search in your own data, adding value to your current and former datasets. Post-publication, there are even more benefits. With well-annotated data, based on ontology terms, your data is more likely to be found by others in search machines, which can increase both citations but also facilitate collaboration. 
Moreover, your data is then retrievable for a semantic search across domains, which can generate a significantly higher scientific impact in the long run. How do you get started with ontologies? There is very good resources to learn about ontologies on the internet. For example, the Open Biological and Biomedical Ontologies Academy, OBO. You can also have a look at the Alexia-derived resource FAIR Cookbook with an introduction to terminologies and ontologies. If you want to check out different ontologies and the terms, use for example BioPortal, which also comes with additional tools like the annotator or the recommender. The same is true for the ontology lookup service by the Amble EBI. Also here, you can find ontology terms, you can browse ontologies and you can use different add-on tools to help you with data annotation. There are also software tools that can help you with metadata annotation, for example, the ISA tool software suite. Lastly, within Omero, there is Omero MDE, the metadata editor for microscopy, which you can use during the import of data to Omero. You can review and annotate metadata using Omero MDE, and it allows you to annotate the different metadata of individual files, but also the metadata of the whole import queue in batch. Importantly, Omero MDE has features that allow for standardized and configurable metadata fields that aid you in ontology term lookup.